Good evening, Papua New Guinea, and welcome to a brand new episode of Business PNG. Kina Bank has recently introduced their own home loans, an opportunity for Kina Bank customers to purchase new houses. The Kina Bank team was at the FM100 studios recently to discuss the new product. Let's get into it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so um, as it is, home uh, the, to own a home, but give me an idea of what it's like with accommodations here in Papua New Guinea. And maybe, yeah, we might want to start with you. Uh, what's Kina Bank's uh, stand on accommodation here in PNG? Because it, it has to be a really, real problem here, accommodation, yes? Yes, um, um, I agree of just what you just said, but um, in terms of Guinness view is that uh, we are a local bank. Yes. I think uh, I, I need to stress that we are a local bank. Um, uh, we are secured and we are very strong here in PNG and uh, we want to, you know, we want to be there. We want to, we want to be there when, you know, 20 years from now people say, hey, I started up with Kina or 30 years from now, you know, my dad and mom bought a house with Kina and We've been ever since, and we're PNG, PNG Bank. Yeah, and when I brought that uh, point up uh, on accommodation being a problem, I was really around the thought that Kina Bank would have done its research and found that you know this is I a do. real need that people have. You, you need to have like foods, food in your tummy, clothes on your back, roof over your head. Really, is an important yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah and uh, well. Now you can see uh, a lot of developments around, and f I mean, for a start, um, I mean, Kennedy Estate, you know, there was nothing there about four years ago. Uh -huh. Now you walk into Kennedy, everybody's confused, where is this place? And that's to show that, you know, there's a growing demand of uh, middle class, you know, people want to own a home. Um, and, you know, you got to find finance for it, obviously. And, you know, and that's where I think we come in and say, look, um, and this is the right time to do it. Right time to do it. Correct. Yeah. I mean, and but it, it can be expensive, can it? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> it can be expensive, and this is why we're here. Leverage. Uh -huh. uh, this is why. This is why. You know. That's why you need a bank. That's why you need Kina. That's why we're here. Saying, hey, come and. You know. You wanna. What's your biggest dream? Owning a home. That's why we're here. Um, you know, we want to go out to the public and say, hey, look, you know, you know, give us a call. You yeah. know, we'll be happy to assist you with, you know, even it's expensive, but, you know, we'll guide you. We'll guide you. And there's a process. We'll guide you and help mm -hmm. you. There's questions. There are going to be hard questions. There are going to be hard financial decisions. But we are there. We will be there to guide you and say, hey, this is how we do it. You know, these are hard times, but mm -hmm. that's how we can, you know, help you achieve that dream. Yeah, everybody's dream uh, is actually having a house. Myself, too, I'm in that bracket, and I'm dreaming of having the dream house, having a castle on the top of a hill uh, or, or something like that. But let's go through it. You, as you, you, you're promoting um, two things here with the bank. There's the own home loan and the residential investment property loan. Talk me through the own home loan. And this is obviously first home buyers, or what is it like? Who are you targeting on this? Yeah, so this is uh, first home buyers. Um, uh, first home buyers. So one of the one of the key things, one of the key decisions we made was um, reducing the equity. Uh, we find we found that you know it's quite hard for families to get twenty percent. You know, you know to put a down payment. So one of the decisions we've taken is that look, reduce that by ten percent, make it affordable for parents. You know that by uh, using their savings or using the uh, NAS fund or super fund to, you know, to, uh, uh, as a deposit. So that's the biggest tick for us. Um, and we've had calls, emails, you know, trying to get into, you know, trying to, uh, how they can uh, move into that. Another part of it is extension of the term to 30 years. Um, times are hard. By extending the term, you know, it gives you some flex flexibility there. When you say term, that's the loan, payment, term, loan, is, yeah. loan repayment. Uh, loan repayment term. Okay. So we've extended it to 30 years. So that gives some flexibility again to families. You know, where before it's, uh, you got to pay a little bit more. Now, you know, you, we at least put back some money back in your pocket. You know, that money goes to buying school fees or, you know, other things. But that's two very key things that we've done is reduce the equity for first home owner buyers. Mm -hmm. So first home owner buyers with now 10% equity. So if houses are what, 100,000, 10% of that. 
is a deposit. So 90,000, the bank funds you, right? That, so, you know, how, going back to the question, you know, it's really expensive to buy a house, right? And that's why we're there. You talk to us and we'll guide you. So if the house is 100,000, we help you find where the 10,000 is. All you need is 10,000 and we find you the 90,000. Yeah, well, you you really hitting the nail in my heart now when you say, of course, of the equity thing about 90,000, you're paying. Uh, if the thing is, uh, if the cost is at 100,000, a 10% you come up with, um, and 90,000, how does that work really? Explain it a bit more for me, if you can. Okay, so so let's take you for, for example. So you there's a house on the market you want to buy, right? That house has to be, first of all, uh, it has to be, has a title, must have a title. So that's... So 100,000, you agree, you're going to have 10,000 somewhere. So obviously, um, for a working class, um, one, one way to look at it, you would have a savings, one. Now, if you don't have a savings, then we look at your number on super or NAS fund. Okay, so you could go to NAS fund, number on super, and say, hey, um, I'm trying to put this proposal through the bank to acquire this property for 100,000. I need 10,000. NAS fund does that for you. Then we then look at if you can service the loan. I think that's the next part. But important is getting your foot in the door, and that's mm. that's that's a critical part there. Yeah, and the flexibility with a third thirty year period. Yeah. There you go. I'm Leanne Gerari in Port Moresby, and you're watching Business PNB. The Center for Excellence in Financial Inclusion hosted a working group workshop for stakeholders last week in an attempt to review the progress of the National Financial Inclusion Strategy 2016 to 2020. To date, around 1 million bank accounts have been opened under the strategy. Following the 2018 AFI Global Policy Forum in Russia, where member countries recommitted to the Maya Declaration, Papua New Guinea has continued efforts to bank the unbanked with the National Financial Inclusion Strategy 2016-2020. In a room full of financial inclusion stakeholders, the country's industry apex organization, CEFI, reported on the progress of the second National Financial Inclusion Strategy. According to Alison Piddick, Assistant Governor of the Central Bank, the National Financial Inclusion Policy was recently approved by Cabinet. We are really thankful to the government of Papua New Guinea uh, and the NEC, National Executive Council, for having approved the, the national policy uh, on financial inclusion. Um, that is an important policy. Again, it, it amplifies visibility and importance on a, on a mandate by government, uh, which are being driven by, by uh, all stakeholders, all financial institutions, research institutions, education institutions, everybody, literally. He issued a challenge to stakeholders to use the remaining years of the second strategy to drive efforts and be more visible. What we want to look at today, and hopefully we can discuss, is to uh, to let Papua New Guinea know and uh, families out there, some of them may be in the rural areas, to know that there, there are people who are working very hard uh, and continually to discuss. They are not giving up to address the issues of exclusion. Uh, a lot of our folks at home, a lot, a lot of rural areas, huh? they are excluded from uh, you know, participating in, a, in an economy that is growing very fast. Uh, developing very fast, it's a, and we are turning out to be an emerging economy, and so the opportunities are there. So we want to uh, get all our families to to be part of the banking system. The strategy implementation doesn't come without setbacks, however. The country's geographical terrains make service delivery quite difficult, and low technology innovation and penetration suggest that the traditional modes won't work. We really feel the leapfrogging technology is the way forward for Papua New Guinea because of two reasons. One is the population density, which is very low. And also, I think the second one is the, the rural terrain is very difficult to reach. So technology, and also we are really thankful for the mobile network operators, which they have reached most part of this country. And we feel when we visited these places, having agents 
in those places is the only way forward. But the agents controlled by by Port Moresby based head officers are not going to be a viable proposition because it's very very costly for them to monitor these agents. So we are looking at a principal agent in one of these places who will control the other local agents. So which is a, which is a model which has been practiced in Africa very effectively. And we feel that uh, this might work in Papua New Guinea as well. The working group aims to deliver solutions to these hurdles. I'm Leanne Girari in Brisbane and you're watching Business PNG. Here are some business stories making headlines across the country and the region. Minister for Civil Aviation Alfred Manasses said that the PNG Accident and Investigation Commission had sent two investigators to Chuk 22 hours after the accident occurred. He also said the Federated States of Micronesia's Minister for Transport, Communication and Infrastructure in a letter welcomed the offer of assistance. To participate in the uh, investigation, we will get to the bottom of this uh, accident and find out exactly what happened, how it happened, so that corrective measures can be recommended uh, to the aviation industry, including New Guinea. Minister Manassas said the investigation are underway with downloading, decoding and analyzing of data from the flight data and cockpit voice recorder that will be done in PNG by the PNG AIC. Uh, the investigators are working on to retrieve the recorders and all of that. Uh, it's not that easy. Uh, because of the the uh, the, the situation um, uh, on the ground, so um, uh, as soon as the um, uh, recorders are all retrieved, and then uh, detailed information will be accessed through that process. Minister Manassas said the Boeing 737 aircraft is submerged 33 meters in the sea, and if necessary for in the investigation, the aircraft will be salvaged. Require the aircraft, uh, then we will salvage it. Uh, if we don't require the aircraft, then uh, then decisions will be made by the relevant authorities as to how to deal with that situation. So, meanwhile, graphics video circulating on social media of the aircraft landing midway on the runway and later running off the runway, Minister Manassas says that it's misleading and the plane landed 60 meters short of the runway. It's not as if it landed and then skewed off into the sea. Uh, there's a lot of uh, fake news that's uh, being circulated on the internet and everywhere that uh, the plane landed some 500 meters in the middle of the runway and then went off and skewed into the sea. Uh, that did not happen. The truth is that the plane landed 60 meters short of the uh, runway. Minister Manassas says findings from the investigation are confidential and will be released once the final investigation report is compiled. Within 12 months, uh, but uh, you know, if uh, the investigations uh, work hard, then they could conclude quickly. But that's that's the uh, that's the regulatory requirement that we go to complete the uh, investigation within 12 months and then publish the findings and recommendations. Meanwhile, the four seriously injured passengers have been transferred to Guam for further treatment and the missing male passenger is yet to be found. Adelaide Sirox Kari National, MTV News. In a first for Papua New Guinea, the country has successfully issued sovereign bonds on the world financial market, which will see much-needed revenue injected into the country's economy. According to Treasurer Charles Abel, the government had aimed to raise 500 million U.S. dollars which it did successfully. He said that whilst interest had reached a potential 3 billion US dollars, the government had decided to exercise prudent management and settle for the initial target of 500 million. In the end, 129 investors had been accepted to subscribe to the bonds, which will mature over a 10 year period at an interest rate of 8.375%. Um, of course, we're asking only for 500 million, as you know within a certain pri price range. So our bankers were talking about perhaps taking more from the market because there was so much interest. But uh, we decided to exercise price discipline and volume discipline. 
And we said, no, we're going to stick to the, even though it's seven, eight times oversubscribed, we will stick to the same volume and we just use the opportunity to renegotiate the price. So we, we negotiate, 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 and we got the price down from 8.75% down to 8.375%. Abel says initial funds from the bond issuance will go towards funding the 2018 national budget, as well as settling the country's short-term debt, domestic loans, as well as helping to clear the foreign exchange backlog. It's a series of a number of reforms that we are bringing to make sure that uh, our debt is stabilized, to make sure that our fiscal deficits are under control and trending uh, back to balance, to make sure the foreign exchange situation is, um, is balanced, and um, we are fulfilling our commitments through the budget to continue to invest in all those critical areas of the, uh, of the economy that is needed and, and continue the economy driving forward. The issuing of the sovereign bond also makes it easier for Papua New Guinea state-owned entities to go direct to foreign investors to seek funding for their own projects without having to seek a guarantee from the government. Such as Kumul Mineral and Kumul Petroleum uh, going forward, they can now also access the international uh, financial markets because Papua New Guinea has benchmarked. Uh, in, in a sense, they, these are unknown entities, but because the government has, has gone out there and, um, and, and, and set a benchmark price and quantity and, and, and level of interest, that now when these entities want to uh, to go and access those markets as well, particularly so state owned yes, yeah, and our state-owned enterprises, now we don't need to underwrite them all the time. With the 10-year period for this bond, the government is confident it can ride on the impending revenue that is expected to be received from major resource projects over the next few years, among them the Wafi Golpu project, Papua LNG, and the expansion of the PNG LNG project. Members of the Chinese community in Port Mosby gathered on Tuesday evening to commemorate the 69th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. Also present were members of the diplomatic corps, as well as several government ministers and heads of state agencies. In his remarks, Chinese ambassador to PNG, Zhu Bing, highlighted the growing relationship between China and Papua New Guinea. In recent years, Papua New Guinea has become China's second largest trading partner and its largest investment destination in the Pacific region, with trade levels surpassing the two billion US dollar level in 2017. Papua New Guinea has become the second largest trading partner and largest investment destination for China among all the Pacific Islands countries which have diplomatic relations with us. In 2017, the bilateral trade volume reached 2.84 billion US dollars, with the PNG side enjoy a surplus. And there are more than 40 Chinese companies operating in this country, creating more than 8,000 jobs for the local people and contributing positively to the economic growth and social progress of Papua New Guinea. This relationship between both countries is being further strengthened with the impending state visit of China's President Xi Jinping in November, just prior to the APEC Leaders' Summit. In November this year, Chinese President Xi Jinping will come to Paul Mosby to attend the 26th APEC Leaders' Summit and also to make a state visit. It will be the first time for a Chinese head of state to come to this country. China and Papua New Guinea are keeping a close communication with each other to prepare for such an important visit of the President. We are confident that, that with the joint efforts of both sides, we will certainly make the visit a complete success and achieve, and achieve fruitful results for our people. 2018 also marks 42 years of diplomatic relations between Papua New Guinea and China. According to Minister Responsible for APEC, Justin Chichenko, this relationship is growing stronger as demonstrated by the increasing interaction between both governments. This relationship based on the One China policy. Recognizing a long standing on the One China policy has been the political foundation of our bilateral relations, which has remained stable and becomes even stronger with time 
with increased trade and bilateral cooperation. We deeply value our bilateral relationship with China as a key development partner contributing towards nation building and economic development of our country. Chichenko added that this was more evident in recent years through Chinese support for Papua New Guinea in many areas of development, more so recently with support for critical infrastructure for the upcoming APEC Leaders Summit. As a host of APEC this year, we are very grateful to the government of the People's Republic of China for their tremendous assistance in providing to our country in the terms of infrastructure development, logistics and facilities for our leaders meeting and CEO summit. And that's all we have for this episode of Business PNG. For more information or if you'd simply like to view this episode again, visit MTV online at the URL at the bottom of your screen. Or to simply join the conversation, like our page on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at the Twitter handle at Business PNG. Until next week, have a pleasant evening. I'm Leon Girari and this was Business PNG.